Hey, this is Sue Becker from Bread Beckers. I got my son David Becker here with us um, today. And we're going to make French bread for you. That's a question I get asked a lot is how do I get that crusty French bread sure. like you buy out in the store? They don't want to do the white flour anymore. They want it out of their freshly milled flour. I will have to say it is very difficult to duplicate that crusty outside with a moist inside in a home oven, but you can come mighty, mighty close. And I actually have a fabulous French bread recipe in my Essential Home Ground Flour Book. It's on page 146. I've just gotten really turned on to it. Awesome. Uh, here lately, I did a private class for an elderly gentleman to make French okay. bread, and I'm like, ooh, I like this a lot. So um, I'm gonna use uh, hard white wheat, uh, for the base of the grain because I want a mild flavor. You know, I want to duplicate kind of a white flour flavor. But I'm also going to use kamut. Okay. Kamut and hard white wheat together just make a really, really flavorful, nice combination, but still very mild. So it's excellent for dipping in your infused olive oils over some bread dipping herbs. Yeah. It just really, really comes out nicely. So um, kamut can be used by itself for French bread. It's not so great for your tall rye sandwich breads, yeah. but it does really well. But I found that the half kamut, half hard white wheat combination oh, it was so delicious. And of course, we're going to freshly mill those. And the secret to a good French bread recipe is lots of moisture. So we're going to use a bread cloche. So let's mill our flour okay. here. And uh, this recipe, in my book, it says five cups of flour. Um, so I want to check and make sure my cup's there. But I've really discovered right now the kamut and the hard white wheat are very, very low moisture. And it really only took about four and a half cups of flour. So I'm going to mill three cups of grain to give me that four and a half cups of flour. I'm going to use one and a half cups of hard white wheat and one and a half cups of kamut. So just going to turn my mill on and I'll mill kind of, I call it the 12 o'clock position. Um, so just a good basic uh, fine grind for your breads. So just turn it on, pour my kamut in and my hard white wheat. So that was three cups and that's going to give me four and a half cups of flour, which is about what I'm going to use for this French bread recipe. So while that flour is milling, I'm going to get my uh, simple, simple ingredients in my, my bread machine is what I'm going to use today to mix up the dough for the French bread. French bread is basic ingredients, not a lot of oil and honey. So water, flour, salt, yeast, just a tablespoon of honey, just to give it a little sweetness and a tablespoon of oil in this recipe. So um, you want to start with warm water. And uh, I have a water kettle that I heat my water to 110 degrees. That's not too hot for the yeast. And the thing with a French bread recipe, you really want to get that flour hydrated so you get a good gluten development. That's how gluten is formed, gotcha. is when the wheat flour is hydrated. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do two cups of water. And, and this is warm water, 110 degrees. And uh, then what we're going to do is we're going to add just a tablespoon of honey. And I don't really measure this too much, so <laughs> I just take my honey uh, dispenser and I just squeeze about a tablespoon in there. You can kind of tell. It's not real, real critical. So that's a tablespoon of honey. Don't want to go real heavy. We're not wanting a sweet, sweet bread. Then what we're going to do is we're only going to add two and a half cups of flour. And um, what we're going to do is it's called an auto lease or a sponge method. And we're going to add part of our flour because the total recipe is going to use about four and a half cups of flour. And you can see there's our pretty kamut and white wheat flour. So we're just going to sprinkle that over the top here. You can do about two and a half cups. It's generally about half of your flour. And uh, so the recipe, since it calls for five cups, it calls for two and a half cups here. Now I'm using our uh, Firma Pan InstaFirm yeast, and I keep mine in a jar once I've opened it in my refrigerator, and I'm going to sprinkle a tablespoon over the top. And I'm just going to put that tablespoon of yeast right here. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to stick it in the bread machine, and um, I'm going to let it just mix just a couple of minutes 
just till it's mixed and then I'm gonna turn the bread machine off and let it sit about 10 minutes. This is called a sponge method or some people call it an auto lease method. You don't wanna put your um, oil in there because your oil will coat the strands of protein and keep them from hydrating. This is just giving a little boost to that gluten formation of your wheat. So just pop that in. And then I have one of my settings on the bread machine is a homemade setting. So I'm gonna choose that uh, cycle and um, I'm just gonna hit the start and it's just gonna start kneading. Gotcha. And that's all I need it to do. So I just clean up my, my counter while that needs just a few minutes and then I just stop it and just let it rest for 10 minutes or so um, to give that, chance, that flour a chance to really hydrate. And this is a great method um, when you're using grains like einkorn or spelt or rye. Um, I think you, you used it some at the bakery when we had some off right. years of wheat. Uh, just to, it's called a sponge method. It's half, half of your flour with all of your water. Um, you and can all of your yeast. And all of your yeast. Mm -hmm. And um, usually you don't put your honey in there, but with the French bread, there's so little sweetener in there. It just gives that yeast something to grow on and, and, and feed it a little better. But this, uh, you don't want to put your oil. That's the key. You want to give this uh, extra little boost to the gluten formation by getting that flour really, really hydrated. So we're just going to let it mix a little bit, and I can actually just peek in there and see if it's fully mixed. So we can just go ahead and, and stop it. Just push it. There we go. And then just let it sit. And uh, I usually just clean up my counter, let it sit about 10 minutes, because all I'm going to have to add now is my salt, the little tablespoon of oil, and the rest of my flour, and then just let it knead like normal. So we'll gotcha. just let that sit, and uh, we'll come back to it in just a minute. Okay, we're back. We've let the uh, dough sit and, and sponge and hydrate that flour really, really well. You can see it's nice and bubbly. I'll oh, actually yeah. take it out here and you can see it. It's bubbled up, it's risen up. And all we're gonna do now is just add the oil. I've just got a little tablespoon of my extra virgin olive oil. Just pour that over the top two teaspoons of salt, just sprinkle it over the top. And then like I said, though the recipe calls for five cups of flour, I've really been making this recipe a lot lately um, after helping uh, Mr. Wallington learn how to make it and I just discovered that it really only needed four and a half, maybe even four and a quarter cups of flour. So um, I'm just gonna add the rest of that flour there. And that's perfect. Three cups of grain makes perfect amount of flour. Your yeast is already in there, so we just added the oil, the salt, and now the rest of the flour. We're gonna pop it back in the bread machine and let it finish kneading. Gotcha. And so I'll just push start again on my knead cycle, and then it'll just do its thing. While it's kneading, I wanna talk to you about a bread cloche. That is going to make the difference in that crusty, um, outer crust and the soft, moist inside when gotcha. you cook with a baguette or a, a cloche, a bread cloche. The, the thing about a bread cloche, whether it's the baguette style or the regular round loaf style that we carry here at Bread Beckers, we carry these by Emile Henri, um, just a great company. We talked about the salt pig in another um, segment, but uh, They've been in business since 1850, same family, still around. Um, son wanted to be a potter, but he didn't want to, um, he didn't want to make pretty decorative pieces. He wanted to make practical pieces. So he started with a pie pan and then has just, they've just gone on from there. The thing about a bread cloche, it mimics the brick bread ovens that you can cook at higher temperature. The unglazed inside captures the moisture as the bread is baking and it actually then does a couple of things, steams the loaves, giving you that harder crust, but soft inside. And also it, it causes the bread to rise and bake all at the same time. But the secret in using a cloche is we wanna preheat the base um, before we put the, the dough on there. So what I typically do to make sure my base is good and hot is while my dough is kneading, I'm gonna get my base preheating. 
with a bread close, you want to bake about 375 typically for most breads. But the French bread, I'm going to bump that temperature up to 425. Going to start there, and then about 10 minutes into the baking, we'll drop it down to 375. So now it's just a matter of waiting for our dough to knead, our cloche and oven to preheat and get good and hot. And so we'll come back to our dough after it's done kneading. All right, we're back. We're ready to check out our French bread dough. It probably has risen some in the Zoharushi bread machine. So we're just gonna lift it out. Oh, this dough looks beautiful. Oh, yeah. Now this one recipe is gonna make three baguettes, size loaves, which fit perfectly in the Emile Henri um, baguette cloche. Or you could do two French loaves if you wanted. So I'm gonna use my silicone rolling mat, which I love. By dough easy. Actually, for the French bread, I use a little water okay. to roll it out. Yep. Gotcha. I don't really want the oil in there, and the water will actually keep it from sticking to my hands. Like I said, the key to getting that nice crust on a French bread is a little extra moisture on the surface. So look how beautiful this oh, dough yeah. is. Wow. Look how stretchy and nice and such a light color for it to be completely 100% yeah. whole grain. So with our Zoharushi pan, we want to always pull those paddles out. Typically, I stick it over in the sink and fill it with some water. If you want to just gotcha. sit that in the yep. sink for right now. And then, oh, look at how fluffy, how beautiful this dough is. I'm going to take a dough divider and I divide it in three equal portions that will fit nicely in the bread cloche. I'm going to use a scale to make sure I've got them all about the same. Yeah, because yep. they're going to bake all in the same pan, and I want them all to get done at the same time. So that's, I can already tell this one's not nearly as heavy as that one. All right. I'll come back and check. Okay. All right. Let's see what I've got here. Oh, that's still heavy, so we'll just take a little more off of that one, bring it down. There we go. So they're weighing not quite a pound each. Okay, that brings that one up to about the same. All right, I'm just going to divide this between these two, and that'll bring them up about Perfect. the same as yeah. this one. Yeah, it doesn't have to be super, super exact. but And I love a kitchen scale, and I love this style because it slides in a drawer. The water is just nice because, like I said, it gives a little, little more moisture around the loaf. So what I do is I usually just kind of stretch the dough out. Here, if you want a little water wow, on your yeah, hand. You're right, that's soft. Yeah, it's nice. You want the French bread to be soft. So I just kind of pull it out like that, and then I pull it over itself and just start kind of pulling it over itself. And then what I do then is take my hand and then squish it away from me. Kind of like you're kneading, but you're just kind of squishing it out to elongate it. There we go. And then if you need a little more water on it, you can. But then what I do is I pick it up and I kind of wiggle it and stretch it out. Or if you need to roll it a little bit, you want to roll it, get it out about as long as your bread pan. And if I need to, I'll just let it sit for a minute and come back and pick that one up. Yeah, that looks great. And that's about as long as your, your cloche base is. So just pull it up over itself. Gotcha. Yeah, you're doing perfect. Those pizza rolling, <laughs> pizza dough rolling days are right? coming in handy. There you go. If you want to work on that one, then you can sure. do that. Yeah, so there we go. The main thing is once the dough has kneaded, you just really don't want to work it a lot because then it, it gets where it won't stretch out. Sure. Um, as you see, you might have even noticed this one rolled yep. out a little yep. easier because it had sat there and, yep. and fluffed up a little bit. So now what I want to do is I'm going to let these rest. I like to let them rest for about five minutes. Just get a little more aerated before I put them in the cloche. You could put them right into the cloche right now if you want, but I have found that it will rise a little bit better when you're baking in the cloche. If you just give it five or ten minutes to, to uh, sure. let that yeast work and get it risen again. So. so I've got a question. Okay. Something I've noticed, we've, uh, we've done the sponging method. Mm -hmm. uh, we let it sit for about 10 minutes. 10 minutes or so. Um, we added the rest of the ingredients. We let it knead. We let it sit for mm -hmm. another 10 minutes. Yeah. We've shaped it. We're going to let it sit. How long will it rise until it won't rise anymore? Um, that's you have a limited window. How does that work? Yes. With yeast, you, you have somewhat of a limited window. Um, of course, 
I mean, if you want to have a longer window, you use less yeast. But yeast is going to feed on the carbohydrates that are in the wheat itself or honey and that you've put in there or whatever. So um, as long as there's food, it's going to grow. So in my typical, like my basic bread dough, um, you know, three or four hours is about the window that you need to be getting it baked because the end product of yeast fermentation is alcohol. And once that alcohol starts being produced, the yeast is going to start dying. Um, your, your bread's just not going to rise very well, and, it's, and it won't um, brown. It's really, gotcha. it's really odd. Gotcha. So there's a, there's a window there, but it's, it's a lot more forgiving. We could have let it sit in there, you know, 30 minutes, another 30 minutes here. Gotcha. But um, with this bread, because, with the French bread, because there's not a lot of sweetener in there, the yeast is going to run out of food faster and gotcha. because there's a tablespoon of yeast um so this is a really fast quick bread kind of to make i shouldn't call it a quick bread it is a yeast bread but it doesn't require so, such long rising times but gotcha. if you need to do a longer rise you know like a lot of those popular overnight no need breads um the reason those work is because you only use a half a teaspoon of yeast gotcha so so um, you, less yeast actually gives you a longer, longer rise, window a longer yes window. Mm -hmm. i gotcha because yeah because it'll just take a little longer for it to to replicate and reproduce gotcha. and and feed and and there's yet less yeast feeding there so yep slower I gotcha. you know so if you need a longer slower rise then you just use less yeast so gotcha yeah but there's a window uh yeah that you that it'll eventually start dying but it's typically three four hours so all right um we are uh gonna just let this uh Ah. Sit for a minute. Sit for a few more minutes. Let me let me show you my little oil sprayers. Yeah, show me. Do you have these? The I love these. Um, these are actually um, designed. Took them some years to get a nozzle that would not um, clog when you used oil in them. A lot of people might remember when everybody started trying to move away from the sprays. You know, the, sure, that you the grease pan your pans sprays, with. Yeah. Yes. So um, they came out with these pump bottles, you know, yeah, within two weeks, the, the nozzle was clogged. Well, I've sure. had this guy for uh, four or five years now. We, okay. we, we found these. Um, we sell um, this style as a set. I have a feeling it was meant for olive oil and vinegar, so you could sure. spritz it sure. on, the, on your salads. But I use mine um, olive oil and water. So a lot of times I'll uh, roll my dough with olive oil, and so I just spritz my rolling mat with the olive oil. It's great when you're cooking pancakes, you know, how you, sure. if you use a big can of olive oil, you pour it and it's like a half a cup, you know, comes sure. out. But so this is just really nice. And then the water is great because I cook so much of my bread in a cloche. And sure. the last thing we're going to do when we put this on our hot cloche base, spritz it with water and put that lid to on. To really give it that firm that Yeah, firm crust. and so when it starts warming up, that's creating moisture. Remember, this is this right. is unglazed, so this is collecting all that nice moisture and just keeping it nice and steamy in there. And gotcha. that's how commercially they get that hard crust. It's a steam right. oven. And right. uh, yeah, just gives so you that. So it mimics that. That's awesome. Yeah, yep, okay. yep. All right, so uh, these are real handy, and I'll even show you a trick for cleaning your, your rolling mat that your sister, my daughter, Ashley, actually taught me. So that's I'm going right. to get a sharp knife, and I'm going to cut some slices across the dough. You can just do this as you like. You want to use a good sharp knife that doesn't drag the dough as it comes. And now I'm going to grab my hot base. The nice thing about the silicone mat is it's uh, heat proof, so I can sit that hot, hot base right on here. Now for this French bread recipe, like I said, it's on page 146 in my uh, Essential Home Ground Flour book. You're going to start at a high temperature, 425. Then uh, for 10 minutes, then we'll reduce it down to 375 and bake gotcha. for about 20. So that's a little hotter oven, and your cloches can do that. Gotcha. Okay? So let me grab that cloche. So here is our very hot cloche base, and you can see it changes colors on you. So we're just going to pick these loaves up and gently just place them on the cloche. Be careful it's hot. Mm -hmm. You don't have to grease the cloche at all. Um, if they stick slightly, just let it cool just a little bit on there, and it'll, um, it'll come right up. We're going to give it a nice spritz, 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 spritz with water. Put our cloche lid on. The hardest thing about baking in a cloche 
is remembering that the base is hot. <laughs> you just <laughs> picked up the cold lid, and so sometimes it's very easy Naturally, to just, you just go. grab yep. and go, but you have to remember that base is hot. So if you want to open the I oven gotcha. for me, I'm going to go in that oven. Okay, and we're going to set the timer for 10 minutes at 425, and then we'll reduce the heat to 375 and cook for another 20. And then you're going to just not believe how beautiful this, this dough rises and bakes all in the same uh, time that it's in the oven. And it does that with a cloche um, because the cloche actually protects the dough from getting the full heat of the oven. Right. It's and like so a slow yeast heat. likes yep. warm and moist. So guess what it's going to do? It's going to work really, 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 really fast. So that allows the dough to rise really fast and then before it starts kicking into that bake. Gotcha. Yep, gotcha. so it's really All great. Right. Yeah, and uh, you can do those without a cloche. Um, on just, we have uh, the USA pans also, ca we carry uh, baguette pans and French bread pans that are just perforated pans that you can cook open like that. But I did a side-by-side -side test of the French bread recently. Um, and boy, the ones I did in the cloche rose up so much more beautifully. Gotcha. It, it really was noticeably different. So, so if you want to try and get as, as crispy of a crust as you can and you mm -hmm. don't have the cloche, mm -hmm. would you periodically spritz it with water um, to try and get that? Or would you do like, a, like an, uh, 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 an egg yolk brush or? Um, no, I would just spritz it with water. And what I did is um, we just spritzed the loaves just like we right, did there, right. popped it in the oven. You can throw an ice cube in the bottom of your oven or okay. I just took my bottle and spritzed all the hot walls of my oven yep. and just created that steam. And that's enough. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Some people suggest putting a pan of hot boiling water you can do that but I found that just spritzing the loaves good with water spritzing the sides of the oven gotcha. the hot oven worked just well but that's a way the, the key is try to create some steam in there yeah gotcha. all right all right we didn't set the timer so we're gonna uh, <laughs> set the timer and come back in 30 minutes and see how our French bread turned out in the cloche all right, all right thanks it. for helping me so um, I want to show you how to clean the, the rolling mat before we uh, bring out our, our baked bread. It's really not very dirty right now because we used water and, um, instead of oil and we didn't use a lot of flour. But if we had um, you know, rolled out and done cinnamon rolls and things like that, it's, it's so easy to clean up this rolling mat. It's a little cumbersome if you try to take it to the sink and wash it all up. So I just use my uh, bottle and spritz it with water. And then I just take my dough. I call this a dough divider, but um, chefs and a lot of bakers call this a bench scraper because this is exactly what they do. So if this was all covered with oil and flour, just get it all scraped up and then just take a cloth, a clean cloth, and just wipe it up. And then you have it all clean, ready for your next next adventure there you go <laughs> next baking adventure okay so our french bread is ready look at how nice and golden and see it's oh got yeah that, it's got that nice hard crust that we want now we really should let this cool for just a few <laughs> minutes so why don't we talk about the dipping herbs um, that we're going to use today we carry a line of dipping herbs by um this is called Charmaine's Bread Dipping Herbs. It's a company called Salt Sisters. It was founded by Charmaine Skillen, and she actually started looking into the health benefits of unrefined salt. So okay. that's how she started her company. And interestingly enough, so these are all based on unrefined salt, all of her herbs and seasoning mixtures. And this was her first um, Charmaine's Bread Dipping Herb. And uh, when I discovered it, it was like, uh, this goes perfect with our business, and these are delicious. But the name of her company, Salt Sisters, is so interesting. She has four daughters, and the initials of, her, of each of her daughter is S for one, A for another, L for uh. another, and T for another. So that's why it's called Salt Sisters. So we love Charmaine's Salt Sisters uh, seasonings. But we have a whole line of... Tex-Mex, Tuscan yeah. Farmhouse, and Moho. Yeah. So mm -hmm. lots of great Salt Sister seasonings. You can check those out on our website. But what we're going to do for this bread, we're going to sprinkle a little bit here in this dish. Oh, gosh. Smell that. Yep. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, man. So wonderful. Let's see what all it's in it. Um, it has unrefined sea salt, an Italian herb blend, sun-dried tomatoes, 
garlic and crushed red pepper. So it's got a little bit of heat to it. You don't need a lot there. And just pour some of that great extra virgin olive oil from Greece on top. Just cover it there. And honestly, this bread is really good just dipped in the just plain olive oil. But the herbs take it over the top. Yep. I actually took my own French bread into a restaurant that is famous <laughs> for their olive oil dipping herbs. And uh, they brought their bread to the table and they're like, our bread is so delicious. You're not going to want that. And I'm like, oh, no, you, you don't have no idea. You don't understand. <laughs> Mine is made with freshly milked flour. So we're just going to mix those up. There we go. And now we'll slide these off the pan here. And see, they didn't stick at all. Um, and nice, pretty crust. Nice crust, yeah. Rose round. Yeah. Isn't that beautiful? This one stuck to the top just a little bit, tore when we were pulling it off, but you know what? It'll still eat. It all eats the same. It all eats the same. So let's just move this out of the way. And I guess I'll cut the one that's a little messed up here on the side because everybody says you're not supposed to cut bread while it's hot, but this is my bread. Sorry. I'm cutting it. <laughs> Listen to that crust. Oh, yeah. And kamut and white wheat, they're so mild and nice. Just a really great It gives great a great flavor. color. I like that. Yeah. The Kamut gives it almost yeah. like a yellow mm -hmm. uh, tinge to it. So it's almost, yep. it's very, it looks very buttery. And, yep. Yeah. It is. Just great. You could get a little more open crumb there if you wanted to make the dough just a little bit wetter. Um, so we could back off the flour a little bit if you wanted to. But, oh my gosh, this is going to be so delicious. You ready? Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Let's bring our herbs over here. Go first. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I can't wait. Hot bread, fresh dipping herbs, good olive oil. Ooh, that's okay. This is actually what I had for dinner last night. Just, oh, yeah. yeah. Mm. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah. That crust, chewy yep. crust on the bottom, yep. but soft, soft, soft inside. Mm. I'm talking with my mouth full. Not <laughs> supposed to do that. That's excellent. Yep. Thank you for watching today. I hope you'll try Sue's fabulous French bread recipe in the Essential Home Ground Flour Book. Use some hard white wheat and kamut. You won't be sorry. You'll love it. And then top it off with Charmaine's bread dipping herbs from Salt Sisters and some really good olive oil. Oh, it's delicious. Thank you all for watching. Yep. Hopefully this was easy, uh, easy to follow along. Yep. I'm and, Sue uh, Becker. And I'm David Becker. So glad you watched.